Well, hey there, YouTube. Travis here. So we're out here today, out in one of my favorite places out in the woods, uh, taking a look at my new-to-me 1992 Toyota uh, standard cab 4x4 four-cylinder uh, pickup truck. So as you guys know, I'm a pretty big fan of these Toyotas. I had an 85 Land Cruiser FJ60. I had a 1989 Toyota 4Runner, which had the same engine and, and drivetrain here as this one. Uh, and then I also had a 2000 Toyota 4Runner uh, V6 5-speed. Uh, and now we're here. So I moved out west. I live in Oregon now, obviously. Uh, and I had an opportunity where I came across a rust-free example of one of these trucks that had somewhat lower miles. This truck has around 150,000 miles. Uh, and I just had to jump on it. So I'll walk you through the example of, of this pickup truck, uh, things I like about it. And there's some little things that, that need improvement here, but nothing major. Uh, this truck was largely taken care of, and I'm pretty proud to be its next owner. All right, let's go ahead and, and jump in the cab. You know, something about these trucks, which I think is pretty special, is, you know, there's no longer a compact pickup truck uh, sold in America. And this is actually a really good example of just a simple utilitarian style truck so first thing you'll notice uh, inside the original bench uh, the previous owner replaced with these two bucket seats uh, these are out of a forerunner most likely you know they're not in the best shape I mean, they are leather but they've got these awful repairs on them and to be honest i'm more of a fan of the original bench uh, thankfully that was included uh, in the back there we'll take a look back there in a minute but let's go ahead and, and jump in here and just do a quick little overview of what we're looking at Go ahead and dim my lights to turn the lights off so I don't die out here, even though it is super beautiful. So again, this is a 1992. It has around 150,000 miles on it. Uh, I don't know if this is the original gauge cluster or if this was a replacement. Um, these are the nicer gauges that came in the SR5 models. So of course, in addition to the standard speedometer, uh, fuel and uh, temp, we also have oil pressure. Uh, the temp, attack, uh, the voltmeter for the battery, and also a gas gauge. Just like a lot of other, you know, Toyota trucks, this has the clutch start cancel button, uh, so that way you're able to just reach in and turn the key uh, to start the vehicle, even if the clutch uh, isn't depressed, it bypasses that safety switch. Believe it or not, uh, this is an air-conditioned truck. Uh, the belt is off the compressor, and I knew that when I purchased it. Uh, we'll see in the summertime if I want to dig into that. You know, it could be that the pulley is seized up on it, or it was just never converted uh, from R12 to R134A, the modern refrigerant. I'll have to check that out. So the previous owner installed this nice Bluetooth stereo and some new speakers. I believe those are three and a half inch speakers, maybe four inch. I'm not totally sure. It sounds okay enough. Um, the heat blows ice hot, but really, other than some cup holders here, and, and I love these things because this was before Toyota really grasped the concept of, of the American beverage consumer. So this will fit soda cans pretty easy, but it won't fit like big gulps or coffee mugs or, or anything larger. But it does have cup holders. So there are some minor things that uh, need fixed and some minor upgrades I want to do. You'll notice there's a delete plate here. So on Forerunners, there'd normally be a quartz clock that would go there. And from what I understand, behind here, there's actually a plug for it. And you can buy these clocks for about $30 on eBay. So I'm going to go ahead and throw one in uh, if I can. There are some minor things like the light for the climate controls is out. Uh, and the light for the dome light up here is also out. But those are all pretty easy to fix. Uh, this dash is, is pretty easy to take apart. And of course, you'll notice my odometer is not working. Uh, that's another thing that's not working. In my case, because the speedometer works, uh, it's really a fault with the plastic gears behind it. And when I go ahead and tear into that, I'll hope try and post a, a video because there's not really that much information out there about the repair of, of these gauge clusters. As I mentioned, we have five-speed manual backed up uh, to a manual transfer case for shifting between high and low range four-wheel drive. We have crank windows and manual locks, which is kind of just the way I like it. I love just the, the honest simplicity uh, that you have here with, with this vehicle. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look in the back. So we have a nice bed liner here. Uh, the owner put on a class, the last owner I should say, put on a class three hitch in the rear. And they have the original bumper here uh, with the bumper hitch. 
Uh, at some point, I'll put the chrome bumper back on. I have a feeling there's there's probably some fitment that needs to be done. There's the original bench seat. They left me some motor oil. And really, this is, you know, it's a more simple camper top, uh, but they were sleeping in it. Apparently, it does not leak more than a dribble. We'll go ahead and, and test that out here when I do some camping here in a little bit. Uh, but overall, uh, I'm pretty happy. All right, we'll go ahead and start this thing up. If you've ever owned one of these trucks, you're pretty familiar with that buzzer. Put our foot on the clutch. This is, of course, a warm start. And there she goes. Just humming and, and ticking away. I do love the sound of those headers. And this thing just has, you know, it's more power than you think when you, you really get on it. One thing also worth mentioning here, I do have one of these clubs here. Uh, this is an extremely easy truck to steal. Uh, and as I live in the city of Portland proper, you know, these locks right here are, are pretty easy to get into. And, and this ignition is, is really nothing special. Um, if you have any Toyota truck of this vintage, I'm sure with a whittled down key, you could start this pretty easy. And to be honest, this club right here is pretty poor protection as well. You know, people can defeat this lock easy, but someone can also just hacksaw through uh, this steering wheel too, but it's something. Eventually I'll have a, a kill switch uh, installed in here, uh, either for the fuel pumps or, or something on the, the electrical side. I just love these classic T-handle brakes. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. Okay, so here we have it, the 22RE. This is a motor that I'm pretty well familiar with. My 89 Forerunner had it as well. Uh, and this is a nice, honest, simple four-cylinder engine. It puts out about 110 horsepower. Uh, this one in particular, it's nice. I'm not seeing any major leaks or seeps or anything really out of place here. Previous owner did put a set of aftermarket headers on there, as you can see. Uh, and there's also an aftermarket radiator in here. I went ahead and did some research. This is one of the nicest aftermarket radiators that you can buy. Uh, and I was, was pretty excited to see that someone was interested in, in maintaining this engine. I love the 22RE. It's a just a great, simple motor. Uh, it's not perfect. People praise it as kind of the holy grail of Toyota, and I'd be inclined to disagree. I'd say, from a four-cylinder standpoint, the next generation, the 3RZ, in terms of reliability, is a little better. Uh, really the crutch with the 22 re is the timing chain uh, there's another youtuber who did a really good video on 22 re timing chains um, and if you maintain them you have a pretty good shot at being okay um, but if you're a little lax with your maintenance what will happen is uh, whether it's the tensioners or the chain itself uh, will slacken it'll start to rub against the factory plastic guides uh, and if you let that go it makes a heck of a racket coming from someone who owned a 22 RE with that condition. If you let it go, it's going to puncture, wear through the guides and then puncture a water jacket and then you're going to have a bad time. Um, you get plenty of warning if that happens. Again, it's something that they're known for. People will also say that there are some head gasket issues with this motor and I'd be a little bit more inclined to say that I think that there was possibly a timing chain failure or something that just kind of led to that diagnosis. Um, the head gasket failure is a little bit more common on the brother of this engine, the V6 from the early 90s, the 3VZ FE, um, there's all sorts of theories about that engine. And really, when someone comes to me and they say, hey, Travis, I'm looking at Toyota trucks, you know, if they're not someone who's, you know, not really mechanically inclined, I really point them towards the 96 and up uh, Tacomas and Forerunners for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you had the 3RZ four-cylinder, which was still a timing chain engine motor, uh, but that one has a really bomb proof reliability uh, kind of rating and then also the 5VZ FE which was a timing belt engine and a non-interference timing belt engine uh, there was also just you know you can be a little bit more lax with maintenance with those and, and get away with them and you had OBD2 and some other stuff but I think from the standpoint of you know hey um, it's the early 90s you know what's the most bomb proof reliable setup you can get I would say the four cylinder 22RE the nice manual locking hubs on the 4x4 coupled to the transfer case. 
uh, and a manual transmission. Man, this is one of the best setups that, that you can get. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So for an outside look, uh, as I did mention, this does have a nice class three hitch on here uh, from Kurt. There's no wiring, so at some point I'll probably want to pull the taillight lenses uh, and run some wiring for it if I ever want to pull a trailer with this. You'll notice uh, that the truck is sitting up a little higher than normal. That's because uh, there is a lift on here and some larger wheels uh, with some nice looking all-terrains. You know, I'm a little on the fence here. Uh, when the previous owner did the lift, uh, they went ahead and, and they used ball joint spacers here, as you can see. Uh, and that's okay. Um, when I purchased this vehicle, there were a lot of things that I liked about it. One of them is obviously that this is a good rust-free example. Uh, but also there were certain things like, you know, the steering rack bushings down here. Those are some nice polyurethane bushings. Uh, someone replaced the original rubber ones. Um, there's just good evidence of maintenance all over this truck. And I am a really big fan of that as someone who's owned nothing but just poorly maintained beaters over the years and, and tried to keep them pieced together. I may end up taking the lift off um, on the rear. I do have an Adelief for it, but they went ahead and just used a block uh, that supports the leaf springs right there. And again, these are okay I'm not the biggest fan, but what I am a fan of is the fact that that rear diff has no leaks. Oh man, that's exciting. I crawled underneath this truck from the transmission, the transfer case, everything was nice and dry. Uh, that was just, it just kind of blew my mind because I was looking at a number of these old Toyota pickups and all of them had, had some sort of leak or, or something that just wasn't quite right. But from a mechanical and a drivetrain standpoint, uh, I was pretty happy with this one. So where do we go from here? You know, I'm just out here enjoying these forest roads out here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon out here in Oregon. I really, really love it out here. Uh, and with this truck, you know, I made this video to kind of be a starting point. Uh, where we go from here, you know, there's a few things that front, they call it a valence right there, maybe valence, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, that little black piece of plastic that sits below the bumper uh, is a pretty cheap item to replace. Uh, I may go ahead and take the lift off. I may go ahead and, and do the auto leaf for the rear and maintain the lift. I'm not sure. Really, this is a 110 horsepower engine trying to push these big wheels. And any of you guys have ever driven a truck with this setup, you'll know that going down the highway, you know, you hit a big hill. Sometimes you have to downshift into third gear. It just doesn't make a lot of power. And it's that way by design. It's not trying to be anything that it isn't. Um, there's a few minor things in the interior that need done. I'll go ahead and keep you guys posted. We'll go ahead and put that bench in. I just like the ability to, to seat three people in there. Uh, and those seats are not in the greatest shape. Uh, but to be honest, one of the reasons I bought this truck uh, is I don't really have a lot of time to be tinkering around with mechanical stuff the way I used to. And this is a pretty nice turnkey and go truck. So I'm pretty excited for it. I hope you all are too. I'll try to make videos along the way. Um, but as far as getting out in nature, hauling bikes, I think this truck is going to be a lot of fun. Okay there, YouTube. Well, until next time.